Hi and welcome back. So this time we're going to do capital budgeting. Um, the idea of this chapter is basically to learn about what companies do when they're evaluating projects. Um, it's the analysis of basically potential additions to fixed assets of the company. Um, you know, involving large expenditures and long-term decisions, and obviously very important to a firm's continuity. Um, so there's basically a few steps to capital budgeting, but um, it's broken down nicely into into several different methods that a company can use, varying from some very very easy methods that you could do on the back of a napkin um, to some more complicated methods that require the financial calculator and calculating net present values and internal rates of return. Um, but let's start with the most <laughs> simple way to kind of calculate whether a project is worth undertaking or not and that is called the payback period. So the payback period is is really the easiest um, is really the easiest capital budgeting method and it's basically answering the question of how many years will it take to recover a project's cost um, you know how long does it take to get our money back um, so it's it's very very easy, um, and it's basically calculated by adding the project's cash inflows to its cost until the cumulative positive cash flow for the project, um, you know, kind of until until the cumulative cash flow turns positive. Um, so the way to calculate this is by drawing a table. Um, in my opinion, I mean, there are obviously many ways to do it, but I think this is the best way. Um, let's have year. Um, cash flow and then we'll have our running total um, or what we could also call you know the balance um, and let's just say this is a three-year project um, so you know let's do year um, zero year one year two and year three and we're asking ourselves is it worth undertaking this project so in year zero let's just say that there is a negative cash outflow of fifteen thousand um, dollars yeah fifteen thousand dollars and that's because you know this project costs fifteen thousand dollars to undertake so what's our running total in year zero well it's negative fifteen thousand now let's say this project is turning in a cash flow of seven thousand dollars in the first year um six thousand dollars in the second year and then four thousand dollars in the third year. So let's calculate our running total. Minus fifteen thousand plus seven thousand is negative eight thousand. Minus eight thousand. So if the project had only gone on for a year, we'd be looking at still a net loss of $8,000 at the end of the first year. Well, that's not good news. <coughs> so let's carry on. In the second year, we make $6,000. So minus $8,000 plus $6,000 is negative $2,000. Well, we're still in the red. Um, but the project goes on for three years. So let's see what happens in the third year. In the third year, we get $4,000 in. So minus $2,000 plus $4,000 is positive $2,000. That's great. We're in the positive. So it's worth undertaking the project. Um, because it's a three-year project and we seem to be in the positive by the end of it. Now the question is how long is the payback period? So we know that we break even sometime in this third year. Well at the beginning of the third year we were still negative at 2000 but sometime during this third year we must have broken even because by the end of the third year we're in the positive already. The question is when did that happen? So this is how to calculate it. The way to calculate it is by taking the negative balance from the previous year and dividing it by the positive cash flow from the third year. So over here that would simply be minus 2000 over 4000 and that comes out to 0 0.5. I mean I'm taking this as an absolute value so I'm just ignoring the I'm ignoring the negative sign. So it happens exactly halfway through the third year. So we know that we have two whole years plus half a year and that comes out to 2.5 years so very back of the of the napkin kind of calculation how long will it take for this project to break even two and a half years um, and if you think about it it's very intuitive how this formula works how we get you know taking this and dividing it by this it's because 
if you think about it, we start we start the year, we start the third year at a neg, you know, a net loss of two thousand. Um, so let's just say that you know a few days in we've made a dollar, so now we're at minus one nine nine nine. Then we make another dollar and at minus one nine nine eight, and so on and so forth until eventually we hit zero. So we're asking ourselves, when does this zero happen? So you know how much of this four thousand dollars needs to cover this two thousand um, dollars in the third year to kind of get to zero? Well, half of it because you know half four thousand is two thousand. So in the same way that you know, half of this 4,000 is needed to cover this 2,000. We also need half the year um, in order to cover it. So that's kind of the intuition behind that, and that's why we get to two and a half years. Now, as long as this two and a half years is less than the total amount of time that's allotted for the project, then we accept the project. So the question we're always asking ourselves is, do we accept or do we reject? So in this particular situation, as long as the amount of years that it takes to break even is less than the total time span of the project, the answer is yes, we accept. Now, the final is not qualitative at all, it's very quantitative, so he won't ask you questions like what are the disadvantages of the payback period method, uh, you know, using it as a capital budgeting technique. Um, but, you know, the main drawback of the capital budgeting method that is payback period is that it doesn't really factor in the time value of money at all. Um, <clears throat> also, another interesting thing which I noticed is it doesn't really um, factor in anything that happens afterwards. So, you know, the second you hit break even, like at two and a half years, you know, we think that we're done. But imagine if there was a fourth year over here, and we had a crazy cash flow of minus 25,000 for maintenance on this machine. Well, then it wouldn't be worth accepting. So this payback period method is, is flawed in a couple of ways. Um, but what the second way attempts to do is kind of get rid of one of the issues, and that is the time value of money issue. So the second way um, is called the discounted payback period. The discounted payback uh, period or discounted payback method. Um, and the discounted payback method is very, very similar to the discounted payback method, uh, so to the payback method that we saw above, except uh, we have an addition of an extra column. So this time, you know, we'll have year and we'll have our cash flow. But as opposed to just jumping straight to a balance, we're going to have our discounted cash flow, and then we'll have our running total, our balance. Um, so very similar again, let's just do 0, 1, 2, 3, and we'll have minus 15,000, and then positive 10,000, and then 5,000. And 3,000. Um, in this question, though, if you ever get a discounted payback method uh, question, you will have to be told what the cost of capital is, um, you know, or what the whack is. So let's just say that the the whack of this company, or the cost of capital of this company, is 10%. So all you'd have to do here is, before calculating the balance of the cash flow, you have to calculate the discounted cash flow. So minus 15,000 discounted by zero years is still minus 15,000. 10,000 divided, uh, sorry, di discounted by one year at 10%. Uh, you'll have to do that on the financial calculator. So remember, we're always standing in year zero. We're always standing in the present looking out. So, you know, all of these cash flows that are happening in year one and year two and year three, they're considered future values. So the way you'd calculate the discounted cash flow here is you would be calculating the present value of $10,000, obviously. So, you know, present value is what we're looking for. The future value. Um, would be this ten thousand dollars because it's happening uh, in the future. Um, N, you know, is the number of years that we're pulling it back to zero. So over here, that's one. And I over here would be the whack would be ten percent. Oops. And I over here would be ten percent. And then you just calculate the present value, and you continue to do that for all three of these, and then you would just find the balance using the discounted cash flow um, <coughs> column instead of the regular cash flow column. So that kind of factors in the time value of money and that's you know also going to bring you out to a certain number of years and of course you know if you have the same situation as we did above 
uh, where it kind of breaks even in the middle of one year, uh, which it probably will because you know with discounted cash flow method you're going to get decimals over here because of the of the 10% because of the discounting. Um, so you know you're going to have to do the same thing by dividing the negative uh, discounted cash flow by the by the sorry the, the negative balance by the positive discounted cash flow in order to get that fraction of the year in order to add to the total number of years that you had beforehand. Um, so the discounted payback method is exactly the same as the payback method except instead of using the, this cash flow column you discount them first using this work and then you proceed to just have a look at the discounted cash flow um, and the balance and when it turns positive and then you know using the fractional method uh, to find out you know how far into that year did it take to to break even. The third method we're going to use um, is the net present value method. Um, and that is very simply if the net present value is positive then we accept if the net present value is negative then we reject and you know that would be that would be very simply calculated by by just plugging in CF0, CF1, CF2 in that fashion all the way through to how many cash flows you have and then using a cost of capital such as the WAC um, you know to discount it and then finding the net present value so that's just basic financial calculator work this method uh, the question you're asking yourself though is it greater than zero or is it less than zero if it's greater you accept if it's less you reject um, and that you know, will be considered the third method that we use And let's get to the fourth method now. Method number four is what we call the IRR method, or the internal rate of return. I think we touched on this in one of the earlier videos, um, but we're just going to go a little bit more into depth uh, in terms of how to use this internal rate of return. Now, the internal rate of return um, basically should be thought of at this level anyway, as the profit as a percentage. So as long as the profit as a percentage is greater than the cost of capital as a percentage, then we accept. So the basic question that we're asking ourselves is, is IRR greater than the weighted average cost of capital? If it is, then we accept. If the internal rate of return is less than the weighted average cost of capital, then we reject. How do we calculate the internal rate of return? Very easy the same way that we calculate the net present value except we're not solving for a net present value we're solving for i so you just put in all the cash flows into the same um, cash flow worksheet that you use depending on what calculator you're using you just enter in all the all the cash flows and then you compute the IRR so that would be you know hitting the CPT button and then hitting the IRR button um, <coughs> on the Texas Instruments one on the on the HP, I believe it's it's probably very similar. You probably hit CPT and then I uh, in order to calculate the internal rate of return. Um, let's just give a, a tiny bit of intuition into what's happening here. The internal rate of return, mathematically, I mean, he's not going to ask you about this, but just if you're interested, the internal rate of return mathematically is as follows. Um, it works off the net present value, and basically, the net present value of any project is the negative cash outflow on investment plus the summation of all the future cash flows divided by 1 plus i um, you know to the power of n which is how many years it goes on for so that would be the initial investment plus all the discounted cash flows that would give us the net present value now what the IRR does is it's basically the interest rate which seeks to set the initial investment equal to all the uh, future cash flows discounted back to the present. So mathematically, that is really saying, how do we set the net present value equal to zero? You know, what interest rate over here would make the net present value equal to zero? So that equals minus i plus the summation of all the cash flows over one plus i to the n, and then obviously adding i to both sides gives us i equals the summation of all the cash flows that are happening divided by 1 plus the IRR to the n.
and it's this IRR that the calculator is solving for. So again, it's just answering the question of what interest rate do we need to use in order to discount all the future cash flows back to the present, making them equal to the initial investment. So there it is mathematically, um, but again, just using the financial calculator, bunging in all the cash flows and then computing for the IRR and then comparing it against the WAC. If it's greater than the WAC, that means you know our profit as a percentage is greater than our cost as a percentage. Excellent. If not, reject it.